During the past three decades, really, basically, they learned from the West through different ways. Now, I think we should also start to think about how we can benefit from China, learn some certain things from China. And uh, President Obama promised that we will send you know, 100,000 students to China, but uh, this has been already six months, there's nothing happened in this area. And the uh, United States is really not prepared to do anything. So I think China has a lot of problems, as I described early on, but if China can make the second transition, transition to democracy, that country really in very good shape. I think if that happens, 21st century really belongs to China. But in terms of human resources, in terms of learning, it's a really, they made tremendous progress. And uh, you ask about the, the fifth generation leaders. In terms of financial team, in terms of the, 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 the foreign policy, education, science, technology, dominated by foreign educated retainees, or Chinese called sea turtles, because sea turtles is the same pronunciation as foreign educated retainees. So dominated by sea turtles in that areas. But uh, we are really not well prepared at all. In certain areas, you know, China's technology is not lag behind anymore. You talk about automobile. In terms of electronic car, China is, really has the most advanced technology in that area. So we need to worry about that, that kind of a situation. So education is key. Hi, Bob. Good to see you. Great timing, Bob. <laughs> okay, at this point, uh, happy to introduce Bob Hormatz. Many of you know his face. He's now Under Secretary for e Economy. Energy and Agricultural Affairs at State, but he's been at the center of, of international economic issues all, his, all his, his entire career. And at a young age, he was a White House advisor on these issues We've already spoken, yeah. from several uh, influential positions at State, uh, USTR, and the National Security Council. He was responsible for them. And as Vice Chairman for Goldman Sachs International, he was involved in the business end of international financial transactions. Uh, many of you probably heard him as the broadcast media's go-to guy for very clear and articulate explanations of complicated international economic issues. And most importantly, he's been a valued member of the Bretton Woods Committee since it began in 1983. So Bob, welcome and jump right in. Well, thanks very much. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm sorry I missed the earlier discussion. I'm sure it was very interesting and um, uh, thoughtful on, on the issue of China. Um, I've uh, been working uh, on the issue of China for a long time and also been a member of the Bretton Woods Committee for a very long time, so I'm doubly happy to be here this morning. Um, and uh, what I thought I would like uh, would do in this um, short period of time is to address two elements of our relations with China. First, uh, the importance of the bilateral relationship and try to give you some sense of what the bilateral relationship is and where it's going at this point. And second, um, how we look at our bilateral relationship in a, in a multilateral context. And I think there'll be a little time for Q&A afterwards. Uh, your invitation is particularly timely because I've just returned from a trip to uh, Beijing and um, Hainan Island last week. And in Hainan, I was a participant in the Baal Forum, a Baal Forum, which is, uh, as many of you know, sort of a Chinese version of Davos. Um, and uh, afterwards, I also went to Vietnam for a few days. And the basic message I bring back from my conversations is that the, that the U.S.-China uh, relationship is on the upswing and um, that uh, the tone of the relationship, the character of the relationship, the kind of issues we're discussing uh, now uh, are, are, are very different um, and much more positive than would have been the case uh, a month or two ago. There have been a number of uh, significant improvements in the relationship 
And now we have before us the, the, the upcoming uh, strategic and economic dialogue, which I think will advance the relationship still further. Uh, there are a lot of items on the agenda. There's going to be a very large delegation going over. There's a lot of preparatory work being done. And, and all that, I think, uh, reflects the seriousness that both sides attach to this relationship and to uh, dealing with some uh, very specific elements of it. I think President Hu's uh, tele telephone conversation with uh, President Obama uh, a couple of weeks ago and then their meeting uh, during the Nuclear Security Summit helped to um, set a very positive tone. Also, when the president met with the incoming Chinese ambassador who was then presenting his credentials, they had a very constructive meeting. And then uh, Tim Geithner's um, meeting in Beijing uh, with Wang Shishan, Vice Premier Wang Shishan, was also, I think, very constructive. And while I was there, my conversations were equally constructive. I had a conversation with uh, Chinese Vice President Xi and a number of uh, ministers during time in Beijing and Hainan. And I think people are looking for answers to issues between our two countries. And this, I think, illustrates the point that managing this relationship, and I actually had the opportunity to work on the early stages of managing the relationship when I worked with for Dr. Kissinger um, in the 70s when we were just beginning to, uh, to normalize relations with China. It's critically important to have ongoing conversations with the Chinese at all levels. And this is something that uh, there is really no substitute for. It has to be done in large measure on a personal basis and, and done on a, uh, on a steady a stream of issues that, that, that all tend to be linked together when we, when we discuss China, because there are more and more issues that uh, reflect the complexity and the intensity of the relationship um, between our two countries. I think it's also um, important to recognize that traditionally in the relationship we've had with China, both sides have avoided letting trade irritants affect progress in other areas of our relationship. I think when you look at the relationship with China, as, as with any two big trading countries, there are going to be trade irritants. With countries as large as ours, given the size of the, the volume of trade, those irritants are going to be there. They're there with Canada, they're there with the EU and many other countries, and we just have to figure out ways of managing them without letting them become flashpoints uh, and troublesome issues that affect other aspects of our relationship. I think basically we've been able to um, deal with a lot of these issues because there is a generally accepted set of rules and procedures for managing trade relations. It doesn't mean we always resolve them, uh, which is, certainly is the case that we don't, but there are at least some general uh, principles for trying to resolve these issues. In some cases, there are disputes, and these disputes become ongoing irritants. But for the most part, trade relations have been conducted in a very orderly and constructive manner over the years. And um, we see this continuing, uh, but, there'll be, but there will be a lot of them, as we've seen, and, and they just require effective management. Uh, the, the reason I think they can be managed effectively is that both sides understand that there's so much at stake in the bilateral relationship between our two countries, and therefore, we really, while, while we may have uh, re rhetoric from time to time and difficulties from time to time and genuine issues from time to time, as we do in certain areas now, the, the management of them in an orderly and constructive way without having them blow up is, is I think, very important. The, the, the upcoming uh, SNED in May, which is, I think, going to be very important, uh, is, is one vehicle, in fact, the primary vehicle for managing a lot of these issues. Uh, the agenda is still being negotiated um, between American and Chinese officials, but uh, there, it's going to be, from what I've seen, and we were over there during the same time that our SNED team was over there, it's going to be a rich range of issues. There are going to be a number of cabinet members going. All of them will have their own issues. But the objective here of, of this uh, operation is to try to focus on a few specific and key elements of the relationship. If it's too much of a sort of a shotgun kind of thing with a lot of various issues, 
being spread out over the table for two days, it's, it's harder to get things done than if you can focus